Hello beautiful humans! In this video I'm going to talk about three reasons why making boundaries in your life is so important. Um, I, before I begin I just want to say hello my name is Kelly. If you're new here to my Instagram or to Facebook I am a soul coach for women. I would love to have you in my private Facebook group. It's called the Sensitive Savvy Sanctuary. Uh, the link is in my bio on Instagram or on my Facebook cover. If you click on it, um, it'll give you the link uh, on Facebook. I would love to have you there. So this video follows the previous one. The previous video is three reasons why it's so hard for us to make boundaries, which I really encourage you to watch. If this is a, a moment that you're in in your life, um, it goes into those three reasons why it's so hard and like yet the obvious reasons, but then it goes like a step beyond to like the stories and lies you might be telling yourself or have been believing for a very long time. <laughs> so please go back and watch that if, um, making boundaries is a current theme that you're trying to get into. <laughs> um, so, but in this video I'm going to talk about, so that was why it's so hard. This is why it's so important to actually do the work to make the boundaries, to learn to say no. Um, so the first reason is that very simply making boundaries is a supreme act of honoring yourself it's a supreme act of self-love especially if you've been an overgiver, a people pleaser you know you're burnt out from all of that and that's that's where all of this is coming from i've been speaking with women recently and no matter like what kind of stage or period of life they're in if they're just out of college and they're teaching or if they're moms or if they're you know single working women in their 30s they're telling me that they are over givers, that they have a hard time saying no, that they're burnt out, they're losing themselves. And so that's where all of this is coming from. And so, it, you know, burnout is a huge part of what I talk about, exhaustion, um, because I lived it and I, and I tell this story frequently, but it's, it's my main reference point was I was a nun for eight years in my 20s and that was like eight years of having no boundaries. We were just in service all the time. I mean, if it wasn't to the people in the church or wherever, it was to each other. It was like cooking, you know, it was just, which is fine, but there was no balance. Like there was no stopping. I mean, it was like maybe one day a week we had one day a month or twice a month we had a day off. And even that wasn't really like, <laughs> it wasn't like you could just go and do whatever you wanted to do, right? So um, I came home from the convent eight years later utterly, utterly burnt out and exhausted. So I know what it feels like to overgive and to serve and to give and to give and to give and to give and to keep saying yes and to never even, not even have the facility to know how to say no, right? It's like a new skill you have to learn. So number one, it is a supreme act of self-love, of self-honoring yourself, right? Um, because you start to you start to learn and realize and honor the energy that's within you, this creative energy, this, this loving energy that wants to love and serve and give, which we all have. But that is for you to give away when you want to give it away. That's what sovereignty is, right? It's knowing in the moment, oh yeah, I have enough energy. I want to stay late and help with this team project. Or, you know what? I didn't sleep well last night and I forgot to bring my lunch and I need to go home and eat dinner and go to bed. So no, I'm not going to stay late and like, you know, honor where you're at in each moment. And so it is a supreme act of self love that also gives you your energy back. You know, I remember like in the beginning when I first started to say no, when I had come home from the convent, um, it was scary and we'll get into that and you know, it would make me anxious and all these things. But then like after I got over the hump of doing it, there was like this huge relief, like, oh my God, I can just have the night to myself or I can have my Sunday to myself and do whatever I want to do. I don't have this like anxious thing I said yes to that like now I have to go to because I committed to it because I couldn't say no to it, you know? So there's like a great relief on the other side that returns your energy to you. It's like a gift to yourself, honestly. Um, so that's number one. Um, this, the second reason is that it is an amazing school of self-awareness, ladies. So, and that this refers to my previous video, but starting to say no will bring up all your fears and all your stories and all your anxieties about what people think of you. And so 
it is a wonderful school to start delving into why do I care what those people think about me? You know, why don't I care about myself and my energy more than what those people think of me? What is that? Why is there this like disconnect there? Or, um, you know, another reason, you know, why am I so scared to not be the nice person, to not be the, the girl who says yes all the time, to not be the super helper, you know, stay at later work person? You know, why is that so scary? Because you built your persona around saying yes and around being an overgiver. So it brings up all of these um, fears and anxieties and stories, um, which can feel, which is why it feels scary and overwhelming, right? But if you just do it, you know, pick them apart one by one, you start to realize those are all just like lies and stories. And actually, if you want to just start living in your sovereignty and living in your, you know, energetic kind of empowerment and honoring yourself and honoring that energy that you have to give, but like it's on you when you want to give it and you don't care if they don't like you because you said no because you need to go home and take a nap, you know? So you get to this this place of really looking at the crap you've been believing and the way you've been living that out and then being like holy crap like no you kind of get a little righteously angry and you're like you, you know you start to want to honor that and not matter you know if it offends or confuses somebody else you know so it really is a school of self-awareness so if you are in the game of i want to know myself i want to grow i want to live a life on my terms and feel free start looking into these stories and start becoming self-aware and try saying no and going back to what i said earlier how it would make me scared and fearful i would get really anxious I would probably, you know, get like sweaty, get kind of scared, probably like be on my little texty thing back in the day, you know, when I had the flip phone, when I came home from the convent, um, you know, writing to whatever friend or neighbor that you like wasn't going to go to this thing or whatever it was, it would cause me anxiety because it was such a new thing. But once you got over that hump, there was a great relief and it was like this wave of energy. You, you like brought your, you bring your energy back to yourself, which is an amazing feeling. And then it's like, oh my God, how do I want to spend it? It's like very, um, it's very expansive feeling and like light. It's, it's lovely. And then you start liking that feeling and you just keep saying no. And you know, there, there's a balance to that too, which I've also <laughs> learned and I'm still learning. Um, but yeah, so self-awareness. And then the third reason why it's so important to start making boundaries, to start saying no, and also to not like always have to give an acceptable excuse. That's also in my other video, right? We always think we, oh, if I say no, then let me say I have a doctor's appointment or let me say, you know, my mom's coming to town this weekend so I can't hang out. No, stop lying to everyone and to yourself. <laughs> Just say you don't want to go. Say the truth. I didn't sleep well last night. I'm getting hangry. I need to go home, eat dinner, and go to bed. Or, you know what? I actually just don't feel like going to my friend's party this weekend. I love you. I'm just not feeling being around people. Like, just tell the truth. And when we do that, this is the third reason, we give other women and other people the permission to do the same. To just say no because you just don't want to. And like, that is freaking okay. Like you're not bad, you didn't do a bad thing, you're not uncool. You know what I mean? It's like all these like stupid old stories out there that we have in our heads. Like, oh, if I say no and just say no, like everyone's gonna hate me. People don't think that much about you, stop. <laughs> and if they hate you or they think you're uncool, they're not your friends anyway. Um, and I, I said this before, but my friends at the art center where I used to work, I came into that job knowing I was going to have boundaries. It was an arts nonprofit. It's kind of like working for the church just under a different umbrella. But by that time I had learned my game. My game was strong and I walked in there knowing my boundaries. And guess what? I made some of the best friends in the world and they just know me. They just know if Kelly doesn't want to come, she's not going to come. Do they still love me? Yes. 
And that, that is the energy you can bring to a place or to a relationship or to, you know, your family or whatever. And if someone doesn't, you know, if someone disrespects you for just saying no simply, then like, okay, they're not there yet. Like, let it go. It's not the end of the world. They're not going to die. But, but, you know, end of the game is when we say no, honoring ourselves with no, like, BS excuses, just because we're honoring our energy and our needs, we give everyone else the permission to do so. Like you might be like, no, I don't want to go to like that birthday happy hour thing. Oh, do you have like an appointment or something? No, I just, I'm just not feeling it this time. I just would rather go home and have dinner by myself. Awkward silence. Okay. Okay, cool. And they'll like it. They're going to get over it and know you're still a cool person in most cases, right? Um, so play out like the worst case scenario and know that really at the end of the day, you're not going to die if you say no and don't make an excuse. You're actually probably secretly giving that other person permission to be like, whoa, like Kelly just like said she didn't want to go to the birthday happy hour thing that everyone's going to. You know what? There are times that I hate going to those things too. Maybe next time I might just say no. <laughs> you know? You don't know, but it's the energy you carry. And if you do it just with confidence, like I love me, and that takes time, right? That's what that's what the uh, inner work is for. But when you're there and you're like, I honor me and my energy really before anything else. I mean, aside from obviously emergencies and people dying and like, you know, family and partner things. But at the end of the day, your main priority th throughout your day with all your interactions is like discerning, you know, do I have enough energy? Do I, would I like to spend it here? Would this be life giving to me, you know? Or am I kind of drained? Should I just say no and go home? So there comes this point where first you learn how to make boundaries, then you start like setting them and you get comfortable with that. And then you, you're, you're like, you have this facility or fluency of it where it's like in every moment and you can shift into every moment and you can read your own energy and have that sovereignty to be like, yes, I give or no, not right now. And that is what I talk about when I say energetic sovereignty. It's like, you know, knowing your, your energy flow so well and your energetic needs so well as a woman, where you are in your month, you know, if, if you do identify as an empath or a highly sensitive person, those things even amplify this even more sometimes. And it's like really knowing yourself well enough in all of those areas to know how you're feeling that day. And it it's going to fluctuate. But when you learn how to, you know, make boundaries, you, you can kind of walk through life freer. You're just yourself and you know that you're not going to die if you start making boundaries or saying no. That's ultimately what the ego is afraid of, right? This could be a whole nother video, as I always say, but our ego, our persona is afraid that we're going to die if we say no and like disappoint someone or say no and like crack the the persona of the nice girl who always helps, right? Our ego is afraid we're going to die. No, we're just like evolving into a higher version of ourselves where we love and honor who we are and the energy that we put out in the world. We care so much about it. We want it to be spent in a high quality manner, <laughs> right? So those are the three reasons why, right? It is um, to make boundaries is a supreme act of self honoring, self love, loving your energy, giving energy back to yourself. Number two, it is an amazing school of self-awareness and inquiry and overcoming your fears. And number three, when we honor our energy and make boundaries without bullshit, we give everyone else the permission to do so and to just speak the truth of where they're at. I'm like, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> so... If this was helpful to you, let me know down below, share it with someone maybe you've had a conversation with recently about boundaries. Um, I did recently reintroduce single sessions into my coaching. So one hour video chats where we can kind of workshop this and I can give you some tools, see where you're at. I would love to chat with you. Otherwise, have a fabulous day and I love you very much. Bye.